It began 20 years ago with shock and awe in an address from then President George W. Bush. At this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. Operation Iraqi Freedom got underway in the early hours of March 19, 2003. Two weeks later, a statue of Saddam Hussein fell in Baghdad. And four weeks after that, this happened. Major combat operations in Iraq have ended. In the Battle of Iraq, the United States and our allies have prevailed. But that wasn't the truth. Almost nothing during the US-led invasion of Iraq went as planned. The story America pitched about Iraq possessing weapons of mass destruction, wrong. Some say it was a deliberate lie. Vice President Cheney's insistence that- I really do believe we will be greeted as liberators. Painfully inaccurate. America had no plan for a violent insurgency. The war dragged on until 2011, eight years later, killing more than 4,600 US troops and as many as 200,000 Iraqis, mostly civilians. It also shattered America's credibility in the region and along with it, its place as a singular superpower in the world. For those of us old enough to remember in 2003, France, Germany, and yes, Russia, were united together against the Iraq war. But it didn't matter. America said, sorry, actually not sorry, renamed French fries, freedom fries, something we don't do anymore, thankfully, and carried on in a unilateral war that very few allies supported. Flash forward to today, where the United States needs every ally it can get. It needs unity with Europe on Russian sanctions and military support for Ukraine, for any hope of continued support against Putin's invasion. And in 2023, China is a global power, strengthening its military and diplomatic ties while pitching developing nations on a counter-narrative to Western dominance. The United States has spent the last year trying to convince the world to support Ukraine because Russia went to war on false pretenses. True. But developing countries led by China are saying, hmm, sounds awfully familiar. So with 20 years of hindsight, can we say the world is better off after the invasion of Iraq? And indeed, is Iraq itself better off? It's not black and white. Saddam Hussein is gone. Most Iraqis are very glad to know that. But the war also paved the way for the creation of ISIS, which went to war with Baghdad for three years, beginning in 2014. There are still near daily Islamic State attacks in the North, and Iraq is reeling from massive protests against corruption and political sectarianism. There's also the Kurds, an ethnic group native to northern Iraq, about 20% of the total population, fighting with the Iraqi government for decades over the creation of an independent state. Not to mention women and LGBT people continue to experience extreme violence, skyrocketing unemployment in the country, and the fact that American troops are still actually there on the ground. So what lessons can we take from the invasion to avoid repeating the mistakes of the past?